Hey everyone, I'm Matiri, and welcome to my new series where I explain all of the Ableton Live 9 effects. In this episode, we're going to be going over the amp effect. And to demonstrate it, I have downloaded and synced a guitar riff. It's a clean guitar riff, and I'm going to play that for you right now so you can hear what we're working with. <laughs> Okay, so nothing too fancy. It's just a clean guitar riff. So to begin, let's start by dragging our amp, our amp effect right onto the clip. Um, the best way to start explaining the amp effect is that it emulates a real guitar amp. Um, so we have all these different types of guitar amps that we can emulate. We have clean, which emulates a 60s classic amp. We have Boost, which emulates a uh, classic 60s tremolo channel. So it's almost the exact same as the Clean, but there are some differences. We have a Blues amp, which is a bright 70s amp. We have a Rock amp, which is a classic 45 watt amp. You can see I'm reading it right here, um, but I really don't feel like remembering it. We have our lead, which is great for metal, apparently. It really emulates um, metal guitars in like Metallica and classic rock songs that have distorted guitars, but not super distorted. Um, super distortion guitars, like in modern rock, like uh, let's say like metalcore bands that you all enjoy. We have uh, the heavy amp, which is really nice for, again, those metalcore heavy distorted sounds. And finally, we have our bass, which is, uh, it's really good for low end. And when you have the volume very high up, there's also a buzz to it. Like a, they say fuzz, I call it a buzz. It's like a little bit of noise, but it sounds really good. Uh, amp is really good for getting like analog distortion to your sounds. Um, but let's go over the, uh, the different parameters. As you can see, the parameters are persistent throughout all the different amp models, and that's good because we don't have to worry about fiddling a bunch of different things when we want to change our sound. So let's go over it. First, we have our gain, which adjusts the volume of the input um, sound. So let's say from the left to the right with our amp in the middle, the left is our input sound, which has its own volume. It goes into the amp, it gets processed by the amp, and then the amp outputs it to what we ultimately hear. So when we put the gain up, that's going to put the volume of our um, input all the way up. If we put it all the way down, then we're not even going to be able to hear it because it's not, um, it muted essentially the input volume. So one thing to know about the gain is that when you put it all the way up or even using it like a little bit it's gonna add some distortion to your sound which is nice um, that's why we use the gain so much um, now let's go on to these three next knobs which are essentially all the same well yeah I guess you could say that they are our EQ section uh, we have a bass a middle and a treble which corresponds to lows mids and highs so we could put our bass down our lows down we could boost our mids and we could boost our highs if we wanted to there's so many different combinations we could do with this but there is something special about the amp effect and uh it's really neat it it emulates um the electricity flow in a real amp so if we put our treble up then it's going to have a lot of electricity to it which means we won't have so much electricity to our mids and our bass so that's just something to know and understand when you're do using these three knobs is that if you boost the mids all the way up, then everything else is going to go lower because your middle or your mids are taking up all the electricity. Well, not all of it, but a good amount of it. So it's really neat and you should definitely play around with it. Um, next we have our persistence, uh, sorry, our presence. I can't even talk, but um, our presence is like another high knob. What it does is it adds a sharpness and crispiness to your sound. It it affects the tone. 
And the best way to explain tone is that you go from dull to bright. From, from zero, when your presence is all the way down, your sound is going to be very dull. But if you put it all the way up, then your sound is going to be very bright. The tone is going to change. It's really, it's nice to play around with. Um, it's just, it's nice to have it there. It's, it's on like every amp. If you play guitar, you know what it is. Um, it's really nice. So now we go on to our output mono and dual. It's a, uh, it's a cool thing that we could actually change this. So we know what mono is. Mono means that there's no stereo separation and it's very, it's like straight. Um, you can see our clip here is uh, stereo because it has two waveforms on it, but mono would be just one waveform. So we don't have a left and a right. We just have a mono sound. Um, and then if we click it, we get our dual option, which means that it'll output um, in stereo. And <clears throat> that's nice too, because we could have um, a wider sound. One thing to note about this is when you're on mono, it uses so much CPU, but if you put it on dual, it's going to use twice the amount of CPU that the mono uses. So that's something to um, know if you have a slow computer or if your computer is eating up a lot of CPU, um, you're going to want to be careful about using that. <clears throat> Next we have our volume, which is almost like the gain, but instead of affecting the input, it's going to affect the output. And um, the output volume, the easiest way to explain it is what you're going to hear. So if we had a a sound and it wasn't loud enough even though let's say our gain was all the way up and it was still um, quiet we could put the volume up and that's gonna boost the final sound that's processed so I guess that's the easiest way to explain it um, it's like playing with the mixer volume essentially um, now we have our dry wet and what our dry wet is for everything in Ableton is it's going to change between the dry signal and the wet signal. So 100% means we're only getting the uh, wet signal, the process signal. And when we put it at zero, we're only going to have the dry signal, the unprocessed signal. So the nice thing about having a wet dry knob or dry wet knob, sorry, is we can put it to something like 50% where we get half of the dry signal and half of the wet signal. And that becomes very important when you become a little more experienced with uh, processing and you could just get so many different combinations. You could have like three of these amps in a row doing different things with uh, like the dry wet to 20 or something. So you can do subtle changes to your um, signal and it's really nice to have that option. So let's go into using an example and I'm just gonna load up the default patch again. I think that's the default patch. Nope, there we go. So now let's hear our um, guitar riff without our amp on and then with our amp on with the default settings. So here's without. And now let's put our amp on with the uh, default settings. You could already hear there's a big difference and it sounds more like you're in the room, like if you had an amp. That's what it sounds like. Um, let's play around. And let's say we want, instead of this clean sound, we want like a heavy rock sound. So let's put it on heavy and just lower the volume because I know this is probably going to be loud. That's pretty cool. But let's try to make it a little nicer. Let's put the gain up so we have a little more distortion. Let's put our bass a little down. Let's lower our mids and put our highs a bit up just so we can get that high, bright, um, distorted sound and put our presence up so we can really get that crispiness. And actually, I'm going to show you the difference between no um, presence and when the presence is all the way up. So you could see, or you could hear, I mean, that our sound sounds very dull. It sounds like you mu like it's muffled, like you're covering your ears or something. But let's put it up. And 
So you can hear when it's all the way up. It's very bright. It has a lot of highs. And I kind of like that, but I'm going to tone it down a bit. So uh, I'll put that to you about six. Okay, and now let's try our volume. So when it's all the way down, we can hear there's nothing going out. And now let's slowly put it up. Okay, so that sounds cool. Now let's see if this, uh, this output switch does anything. Yeah, you could definitely hear it. It definitely makes it wider when it's on dual. And I could definitely take the CPU to uh, handle it. So it sounds pretty good. Now let's play with the dry wet. So let's see what happens when it's all the way off. It's just our default sound. Now when it's all the way up, it's only going to be a process sound. Now let's try 40%-ish. And it's pretty cool having it around 70 because uh, you could hear the original signal, but it's not so noticeable. So it kind of adds a little bit to the sound, in my opinion. I think that sounds really cool. So lastly, with the, with, with the amp you're supposed to use, well, you're not supposed to, but it is um, meant to be used with the the cabinet effect and it's the cabinet supposed to go after the amp so this is just something that Ableton kind of recommends if you're going for a rock sound like a guitar amplified sound because it sounds more realistic when you add an amp and a cabinet together rather than one separately or one independent of each other um, I hope that makes sense but um, it's not necessary to use the amp and the cabinet but it sounds really good for guitars um, you could definitely get some really nice uh, nice sounds just using either of them but this is just a little tip so let's hear without the cabinet and now let's hear with the cabinet it's gonna sound a little bit more realistic in my opinion I think that sounds pretty cool. And what this is emulating actually is an amp and a cabinet. So if you've ever played guitar or if you know anything about guitars or amplifiers at all, um, you usually have an amp on top of your on top of your cabinet and that makes like a guitar full stack or a bass full stack of uh, for it just sounds good. I'm like losing my train of thought. But anyway, we're going to be going over the cabinet in a, another tutorial, so don't be too freaked out um, about it. I'm just letting you know as a future reference that you could definitely put the cabinet and the amp together to get some really nice sounds. And uh, I think that'll wrap it up, so thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and please come back for my next tutorial on Ableton Effects. So. Again, thank you for watching and goodbye.